Welcome to today's Daily Awesome. You can find us at our home, Austin Men's Development. And of course, if you have dating and sex relationships, you can ask them here, but there's also the Sexual Life Podcast. Check that out. But the Daily Awesome, we are putting out minimum four days a week, usually more than that. We put out good stuff for you to check out. And of course, there's always a link attached uh, to, to wherever you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or on YouTube or Facebook that is basically showing you where you can go to download one of our guides and they're badass, man. Get all of them. I forget how many we have, but it's uh, like 15 or 18. But they're all things that guys have worked through in our groups. Right now, it's 11, it's almost, it's 11, 10 p.m. in Austin, Texas, and there are 18 guys on this call. And we're talking about some really amazing stuff that has inspired me so much to the point where I wanted to record this, okay? And this is about fucking up. This is about making mistakes in your life. And this is about having the perspective and wisdom of masculinity of, of yourself, of just being a human being to make the right choices as a man. We do not have this dialogue. We hear a lot of ideals, we hear a lot of supposed tos, but we don't hear the real honest story of guys who go through it, man, who go through, make mistakes, who, who you know, come back from them and all this stuff. And, and we hear a lot of fear and a lot of warning and all this other stuff. And I kind of want to go into a, a story about it, but first let's kind of explain what had happened, man. If you have, if you have a mistake in your life, right? If you get caught up in something and how this actually came up was like, somebody was saying, he's like, man, I have kids, I have kids, I pay alimony, I got screwed in divorce. And all of those things, I'm a better man for it. I'm happy with it. They were bad times. They made me question myself. They made, there were, there were times which you could complain about, but man, it was life building. And see, this is an important thing that you got to realize as a man. I see a lot of guys not experiencing life, not living life, not letting themselves go and live, live sexually, live financially, take risks because they're afraid of something of what might happen because of the dangers that are out there in the world. Man, that is not a way to live. You got to know. And this was the advice that was told to me that if you are somebody that is going to fuck up, I guarantee you, you can fix it. You either die or you can fix it. And if you want, you can sit around and complain about it all your life. And then you can have a great audience of men who don't take risks, don't take actions or women or whatever it is who want to listen to you complain. But man, Life will never put something in front of you, no matter how bad it is. And this could be of any degrees. This could be getting screwed financially. This could be losing everything. This could be being put in prison. This could be losing a limb, losing your limbs, losing your cognitive abilities, where you can come back from. You got to know that, man. You have to know that. You have to have faith in humanity that that is there. So I want to actually talk about something because when this got brought up on the call, it made me think. So I am at a point where five years ago, five years ago, I lost custody of my kids. In fact, I didn't just lose custody of my kids. I got a child abuse charge put on me. It got entertained. Well, I got charged. So all that shit happened, man. I had to go to court for it, got arrested for it, went through all this shit for it. Terrible thing, man. Horrible thing. Fucking horrible. And these were kids that I was around all, a lot of time. And I don't want to make it about them. I want to make it about the situation because I'm very proud of those boys and always have been. And I could not talk to them. I could not have any communication. You know, I fought the case. I, you know, that, that fucking sucked a good $50,000 down the drain. Um, I got a, a lot of shit put on me. You know, the, the, what happened on after that, there was a lot of drama involved of multiple parties involved. There were a lot of people talking shit. There were a lot of people bashing it. And not only that, it affected my life in a big way. I decided, I remember when it happened, man, I was on a podcast with Terrence and we were talking about it. He said, maybe you should cut that shit out. I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. And it wasn't because I was afraid of anything. I, I talk freely about all the different things in my life. And uh, man, I don't believe in hiding things, but he was like, maybe you should, you know, because you, you it just happened. And it has to do with your family. 
And, and, uh, and so I did, you know, but of all of that happened, that's some really bad shit. You know, when you hear like men's rights people and actually when it happened, the first thing I, I did was actually when this happened, I remember showing up for the 21 convention and all this shit had happened. I talked to the camera guy. I talked to Anthony, who's the head of the convention. And I said, I was sitting there talking to the camera guy in the hallway and I was telling him about it. He's like, oh, fuck, man, Jesus Christ. And he had gone through a lot of stuff like that. And he goes, man, fuck, dude. Unbelievable. And I said, dude, I want to dedicate my life now to like men's rights and, and what that means. And I started looking into it. And I realized how angry these people were. I realized how blaming these people were. Because the fact of the matter is, is the court systems aren't fair. You get screwed. You don't have a voice. You know, people shut you up. We had a lot of stuff coming our way. And I said a lot of drama. A lot of drama means nothing. It doesn't change the kid's life. It doesn't change your life. It doesn't change. It, and it might get like a court case thing, but it doesn't do anything, man. As soon as you step outside of that court and that judgment's been made, whether it's for child support or your well-being or yada, 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 man, nobody cares. You got to live it. The best thing that I could do, the best thing I could do is shut the fuck up, stop complaining, start accepting those things in my life and fix whatever I could. And the best part about this is, is that I was able to make a good life out of it. And that good life came with not fighting, we're not talking shit, but doing and doing what I believed in. And man, I like I, I remember and I was talking about this with Gary is because at the time we we're like, man, you know, whatever the opposite of feminine feminism is, I'm it, you know, because we, we were pissed off at stuff. And then we started looking at it, we're like, man, these guys are so pissed. These guys are so angry. These guys are so bitter. They're talking from their pain. They're talking from their acceptance of their self. That means that man, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do, I can't take on the role. I got the job of masculinity and I can't fucking punch the card. Now that doesn't mean that somebody needs to take advantage of me. That doesn't give permission for them to step on my toes. But what that means is I'm going to take the personal experience of saying, Hey, this is me. That's wrong. Hey, this is me. Stop. And when I can't stop it, Man, I'm going to try and solve it in a way that can be solved rather than bitch to a bunch of people, start gossip and complain about it. But until then, I'm going to learn the traits of suiting up, showing up and working to fix those things. And man, some of the best values of my life. Now I'm at this point where all this stuff can get reintegrated back in. You know what? It's kind of a scary thing. Who knows what it'll be? You can't predict what the future is going to bring. But here's what I know. If I show up, if I have a good support group like I have, if I have people that I can count on, I have people that know me, that know my fears, that know, you know, how I second guess myself, that know how I make the wrong decisions, and that can point those things out to me, I can be okay. But I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to fuck up big time. I have fucked up big time in multiple things in my life. Multiple things that have caused very, very severe problems with my life, other people's lives, and a lot of people close to me. And I've been able to repair them. And the working to repair those things have cultivated some of the best traits about me. Man, I'm somebody that didn't know responsibility. I'm somebody that, you know, had compassion when I wanted to, but didn't realize like how it would hurt people, didn't, didn't know the real meaning of selfishness, didn't know the benefit and the downsides to selfishness, all this sort of stuff. But through living life, through allowing myself to fuck up, man, you can do a lot of things. So what happened as a result from that is, yeah, back in 2012, I was like, no, man, I want to, I want to fix this stuff. The system is broke. The best thing that I could have done and the best thing that I was already doing, because TSL started in 2009, where we started to have groups of men talking. The best thing I did was actually get a bunch of guys together and fucking talk, get a bunch of guys together, talk, cut the bullshit out. And I didn't need to do much for that. I just didn't feed it. Man, that's amazing. You know, in our, in our groups, there's not a lot of rules. The, the main rule is if something shared privately, don't share it. And if you do it maliciously, you're banned for life. But other than that, that that's it. That, that's the one really, the main rule. If, some, if people are shit talking too much, we tell them to stop, right? In, in our upper tier groups, that never happens. That never happens, man. That never happens. I mean, we've had groups since 2009 and Maybe it's happened a couple times. I don't know. I did kick one person out. 
And, and that's it. There's a lot of people who've, who've come through the courses at that time. The best thing that I could do was give man a forum to talk. And in that, not only did I live my life and my journey, but I met other men who were more experienced than me that lived great things of how to deal with stuff and how to deal with life on life's terms and not have it fuck up their life. Man, I don't trust a man who hasn't been broken. I don't trust a man who hasn't lost everything. I do not trust a man that does not know pain that has crippled him, left on the ground crying in desperation. Because if you haven't had all those things, then your concept of how you become a man is wrapped around this pampering, baby, luxurious thing of, of painless whatever. It's not reality. It means you sheltered yourself. It means you repressed the greatest parts about you. Choice, sexuality, ambition, purpose, drive, because you are afraid to get hurt. And man, if you say you have those things and you haven't gotten the shit knocked out of you and built yourself back up, then you're lying to yourself about having them. That doesn't mean you need to go seek out pain or whatever. But look, let me just tell you, I'm afraid of failing. I fear it every day in every moment of every important thing that I have. Anything that's important to me. With all the experience that I have, I'll be afraid to take a risk in business. With all the experience that I have with women, I'll be afraid to talk to somebody about a different thing. But what I know is once I get in the mode of doing it, it's awesome. And what I know is when I fail, the first thing I think is judgment towards myself but I know that's short-lived and that I can get over it. And if I have a team, if I have a support system, and if I keep showing up, if I keep wearing that suit, if I don't give up and I don't get caught up and complain and blame, it all works out and it makes me a better person. I never could have predicted my career, but my career is a result of killing myself to be an artist, killing myself to get into film, Killing myself to, to play music and tour. You know, all of it was a result of those things. And I'm very happy with who I am today, man. It's a great, great foundation to have. And I wouldn't change it for anything. And what's even more happy is I get to know all good people like you. So, look, if you're listening to the podcast, if you're a part of this on iTunes or Stitcher, you know, all those things like leave a review, leave your thumbs up, man. But more importantly, interact, interact with us, man. I do this because I love it. I don't do it so that you could listen passively and go, oh man, that was a nice thought. If you're using it for that, cool, great. I do it because the more that we get into this dialogue of actually dialogue, you're not arguing and all this bullshit, it's a great thing. Austin Men's Development Board is free. It also comes with the problems of a free board where there's a little bit more riffraff. And, you know, as somebody said, <laughs> it's like there's the 50 guys who contribute. There's a bunch of people whining. And then there's like, you know, 400 trolls from weird parts of the world that are click farms. But anyway, that all being said, man, we have great groups where you can pay and be a part of, be a part of a live call. And the best part about the live calls is when you guys are talking, when the guys that are on the call now are talking rather than me. But these podcasts and so on are out there to broadcast the message. And a lot of these guys don't want to, you know, be a part of a podcast that, that is, you know, shown publicly. We're part of this call because we know each other and we trust each other. And we have each other's backs and that's fucking cool. If you're looking for that and I know every man needs that, and there's other venues to do it in, but that's what we do. We do it well. We've been doing it for a long time. So step it up and uh, man, thanks so much for listening.